Coming up on this episode of Nintendo Cartridge Society, the Retro Month games may be over, but the ranking has just begun. It's dangerous to go alone, so the Nintendo Cartridge Society goes with you. Welcome to Nintendo Cartridge Society. My name is Patrick Ellers, and I am joined, as I am always joined, by my co-host, Mark Mitchell. Mark, how's it going? It's going so good, Patrick, but I gotta tell you, I'm dying to know mm. if you have any updates on uh, your Switch's kickstand. Yes, so the previous episode, in the news episode, Tuesday's episode, uh, I revealed that my kickstand had been knocked off of my Nintendo Switch. Uh, it brushed up against the bed, a, a gentle breeze, and it flew right off like it was paper. <laughs> um, turns out it also pops right back in like it's paper. So all you, <laughs> all you got to do is apply a little bit too much blunt force with your thumb, and it goes right back in. Oh, so it's like, you know, in um, uh, sitcoms when somebody gets amnesia, and in order to get mm, yes. not amnesia, you have to hit them mm -hmm. on the head again. It's a very with your similar process yeah. <laughs> with uh, the Switch kickstand. That's good to know. Uh, this yeah. is good information. Mm -hmm. it, well, it's it's something that I I ha I've always thought like this part of the switch is too fragile, right? Um, but uh, it turns out it's fragile, but also immediately repairable, <laughs> and I need not have frightened myself or you or our listeners. Um, but here's something that we should all be frightened of: my copy of Sonic Forces. <laughs> Would you like to borrow it? Someday, we have a program where you can do that. It is the Sonic Forces Borrowing Program. You can borrow my copy. I mail it to you for as long as you want. You play it for, again, as long as you want, and then you send it back, and it's free. I'm not uh, sending it through the mail right now just because I don't really want to go to the post office, uh, but someday the world will be normal-ish again, uh, and uh, so get on that list. If you want to get on the list to borrow this thing, all you got to do is email us at Nintendo Cartridge Society at, at gmail.com gmail and give us a mailing address where I can send uh, the game, and that's it. It's as simple as that. April, of course, has been retro month. Uh, we've been talking about classic SNES retro games the entire month, and that continues today. But we're at the end of the month. That means the end of retro month. And we've loved doing this. We've loved having like this like themed month um, that we're like talking about similar things the entire time. But we would love your ideas for what those themed months might be. Right. And it, it, it should be stressed that we are not out of ideas <laughs> we will generate more ideas if you do not generate them for us but it's uh it's fun to have a good uh give and take um we did get a suggestion on uh twitter from uh silvergrass moon saying hey mark and hey mark and patrick since you have asked i would love to hear a definitive ranking episode to the paper mario rp or to the mario rpgs um hashtag save puck I don't know what that reference is. <laughs> I don't know who Puck is. <laughs> it could uh, be that I'm not enunciating very well, and mm. he's encouraging me to save Huck from on my Animal Crossing island. Oh, Huck. Mm. Possibly. Oh, I wonder. That is totally a guess. Possibly, yeah. Um, but also, do not save uh, Huck, <laughs> right? <laughs> we we don't like him. Um, but so this this is a this is on the right track. Um, I don't know if Mark and I have uh quite enough time to play the uh, Mario RPGs to have like a solid ranking of them, but it definitely on the right track. I like where that's going. And I think we can talk about something in the vein of uh, Mario RPGs. Totally. Um, but maybe just not that exactly. Um, but you can email those suggestions to us, Nintendo cartridge society at, at gmail.com. Gmail or you can tweet at us at Nincart Society on Twitter. Okay, Mark, we have a uh, Herculean task ahead of us. Let's get into it. Let's start our, I don't even know what we're calling this, our retro month rankings. <laughs> So 
So what is this, you may find yourself asking yourself? Uh, Are they just going to rank the four games they played this (laughs) month? No, not nearly that easy. We thought about it. Don't get us wrong. (laughs) Instead, what we are doing is we are taking a small batch of things from each of the four games that we played this month and ranking them. So first we are going to do the... Uh, Light World Bosses from The Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past. Then we will be ranking the... Hold on, I gotta check. We are going to be ranking the Beams from Super Metroid. And then we are going to be ranking the Shy Guy Variants from Yoshi's Island. And then we are going to finish with ranking the members of Star Fox. I'm excited for this because it's been a while since we've done a definitive ranking. And just like there are mm-hmm. Nintendo Direct Minis, I feel like, uh, you know, this is like four many mini rankings that are leading us up to something we don't know in the future what like that next big definitive ranking would have to be. That's right. That's right. And and look, yeah, I mean, like you're right. We it's been a while since we've done a definitive ranking. So like maybe it's time to like kick off the dust, right? And is that a saying? Kick off the dust. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and just really like let like let's let's get into it. Let's really debate the merits um, and put some things in order and uh, put numbers to them. Uh, so, Mark, shall we begin at the beginning? It's a very good place to start. Thank you. Um, Doe number one <laughs> with a bullet. <laughs> Ray number two. Uh, no, we are doing the Light World bosses from the Legend of Zelda: A Link to the Past. So, Mark, what are these bosses? Yeah, okay. So we have the Armos Knights from the Eastern Palace. And this is like, you're just fighting six of the Armos Knights that you uh, have encountered before. They're just like in a grid. They're in like two lines. Well, so so they're, they're a little bit different than uh, like anything you've encountered before because they're like hopping around. Um, and they do that thing where like they're hopping in a circle. But like the um, sprites and- are the same, right? No, the sprites are bigger and fatter oh. than than they appear <laughs> other other places in the game. Um, and then they'll also do the thing where like they go to the back line and like sort of like hop uh, up toward you. And of course, yes, I did just talk about them as though they're doing an improv scene. They all go to the <laughs> back line <laughs> and then hop towards you. Um, and when you are down to the final of the Armos Knights, um, the the last one turns red and then it kind of like jumps into the air and like slams down hard and you have to shoot arrows at it to to kill it. Uh, next you had the uh, how do you say this Lanmola Lanmola. Your guess is as good as mine, Mark. <laughs> Sounds good from the Desert Palace and this is like a uh, like a worm uh, that burrows underground and then pops out and will like go from one part of the screen to the other part of the screen. And you can only really like hit its head when it's going in or going out of the earth. Yeah. And this is another one that like the boss itself is actually multiple bosses or multiple creatures that it's three separate like land worms or like sand worms that kind of like jump and like slither through the air. Next you have Moldorm from the tower of Hera. And this I feel like was, is maybe the most recognizable of these bosses. Totally, Um, because I feel like you see it in a lot of the Zelda games, like the 2D Zelda games that followed. Um, I I don't even know how you describe this. It's like uh, four little like circle segments with googly eyes that. But I think um, I think it too is a worm or snake like creature. Yeah, for sure. Um, and those those like distinct balls are like segments of its body, which isn't unlike the uh, Lanmola. Right, um, but this is the thing that just like knocks you off the platform. Yeah, and you have to hit it in like the the little like uh, pinwheel on its butt. <laughs> yes, exactly. And then finally, you have uh, Aghanim. Is that how you say it? Mm-hmm. This is one of those fantasy I, names that yeah. like you like see it read. It, you see it and you say it in your mind, but like actually how it's supposed to be pronounced. Is As unknown. a child, I always said I always said Aghanim. Oh, that sounds very like. Um, fantasy 19 like or late 80s early yes. 90s appropriate so i believe that that would be the case like i was reading a lot of D manuals yeah that's <laughs> correct <laughs> like i was watching the rankin bass uh the hobbit movie yeah you bet <laughs> right so yeah so aganim uh mm-hmm. is at hyrule castle and is like the you know kind of how zelda a lot of times has these like bait and switch big bads 
like um this is a link to the past kind of like bait and switch yeah so like he's he, he's a wizard he throws magic at you you shoot his spells back at him by swinging your sword at his magic uh, and then every now and then he like throws lightning and that's pretty cool <laughs> Um, so, uh, we, we've got these four and I think the part of the reason why we are focusing on just these four instead of opening it up to all the bosses is that all, uh, four of these bosses are repeated in the final dungeon, um, that they are like sort of, uh, integral to the structure of the game overall. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, I think, I think that that's what separates them. What makes them a little bit more meaningful than like. Uh, this two-headed dragon versus yeah. like this blob of uh, uh, goo with eyeballs in it. Yeah, and and maybe it's f- partly because you know uh, I've probably replayed the Light World part of A Link to the Past more than I have like yeah. the entire game. So these, especially like Moldorm, are is way more recognizable to me, and like um, I have stronger feelings about them than some of the bosses later in the game. Yeah, and I know you mentioned that Moldorm like reappears in um other uh 2D Zelda games. For sure he's a boss in um uh Link's Awakening. For sure he's in Link's Awakening. So where do you want to begin? I um I will throw out here that for me of the four, the Armos knights are the least impressive. So I would I would I Sort of agree, but I think that it's on the same plane as the land molas, uh, the 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 desert worms. Um, I think both uh, both a, a series of knights and a series of um, like floaty worms are both pretty weak as far as bosses go. Especially when you consider um, that Moldorm has like a little bit of an iconic status, uh, being that it appears in multiple games, um, and just that like I don't know, it's so it's got a weird amount of personality in like the googly eyes on the front of it. Um, and then Aganim actually has like dialogue. Like it's, it's a character um, in the story. So like, I feel like there are two tiers here, right? We're talking um, that like Moldorm and Aganim are like the, the high level and the Lanmola and the um, uh, Armos are, are lower level. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Um, so for me, the reason I would put the Armos Knights below the Land Mola is because, yes, they are like bigger and fatter and they like dance around more, but they are just like basically uh, the enemies um, that you've seen earlier in the game, just with like a little bit of Miracle Grow, versus at least like the Land Mola is something that is specific to the boss battle. Yeah. Yeah. Um I I I will agree with that. Um so I I I am comfortable putting the the Armos Knights at uh number 4 uh and then the Land Molas at uh number 3. Mhm. Um which then just means uh do we give the number 1 spot to the Moldorm uh or to Aganim? What I'm do you think a, here, Mark? I'm a little bit torn because I think that Aganim like you said is like a real character. Um, <laughs> right. right, which like is impressive, but I do think as far as, uh, all right, I'm about to say something and then I'm about to immediately contradict myself. Um, I love it. <laughs> but I think that potentially the Moldorm, right, has like a longer, uh, a longer expiration. Like I feel like Moldorm you, has shown up in other places, mm-hmm. um, you know, and like Aganim is a character one but, and done yeah but also is like yeah but like ganondorf you know is or ganon is there at the end and he's like really the big bad and so i just i just feel like moldorm has more longevity to it that being said you are right that the only other game i can think of off the top of my head that moldorm is in is Link's awakening but for whatever reason like it feels moldorm feels so zelda to me yeah um i yeah i don't well, know it's it's also interesting that both of them and both boss fights like introduce uh it's it's more than just like hacking and slashing at because what you the way you fight um the Armos Knight and the Landmola is just like don't get hit and like swing your sword at him a bunch of times. But like the Moldorm, you wanna hit him in his tail, but like mostly what you wanna avoid is getting knocked off the platform that you're on. So it's like a different right. you have to conceptualize how you're fighting him differently. And Aganim is uh similar in that 
you have to wait for him to shoot magic at you that you can bounce back at him. Um, and that's the beginning of like a, a totally uh, like Zelda form of combat, but it's the first time we ever see it where you are knocking magic back at the, the enemy. That'll come back in basically every Zelda game after, right? Um, yeah, I mean, so up I, to Breath I, yeah. of the Wild, like when you're defeating Calamity Ganon, a lot of it is the yeah. same like mechanic. Um, you saw it in Ocarina yeah. of Time too. So yeah, that's a good point. So are you arguing then that Aghanim should be the number one and Moldorm is the number two? I think that is what I'm arguing. I don't know that that's what I went into that <laughs> sentence in, intending. Um, but yeah, while Moldorm himself may have more staying power, Aghanim, the uh, mechanics that he introduces have way more staying power. Yeah, I, I think that's fair. Like when I, So I went ahead and looked up where Moldorm has shown up additionally mm -hmm. and like as a boss he's been in a link to the past links awakening a link between worlds and triforce heroes so which is interesting because like that means he's really just kind of been in this link to the past type world like anytime yeah. they're like in that world they're like oh yeah let's definitely for sure sh uh, have moldorm, moldorm show there. up um and so yeah i think you're right that is like sure he's maybe been in more games but as far as the importance of the character, I do think that Aghanim and like the mechanics behind it do pay off longer term. Okay, so just to recap our list of the top four light world bosses from The Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past. Number four is the Armos Knights of the Eastern Palace. Number three is the Landmola Desert Worms from the Desert Palace. Number two is Moldorm from the Tower of Hera. And number one, the best light world boss in The Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past, is of course Aghanim, uh, the evil wizard guarding Hyrule Castle. I feel good about that one. I do too. I think that was a good one to ease us back into the waters of mm -hmm. uh, definitive rankings. And I truly uh, believe that that is definitive. I, I will agree with that 100%. Mark, let's wade into deeper territory, deeper waters here, deeper territory, <laughs> and, and uh, discuss our, ne our next list, the beams, Samus's beams from Super Metroid. <laughs> First thing we must determine, what counts as a beam and what does not count as a beam? Yeah, because I'm wondering if we're going to have a slight bit of disagreement here because you generated this list and then I went in and was like, wait, but there's like a huge omission here, but maybe not. Maybe I, maybe my brain is the huge omission. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe your brain's a huge <laughs> omission. <laughs> Mark, I don't know what that means. Um, so I think, I think the following are undisputed and undisputable. The charge beam, the ice beam, the spacer beam, the wave beam, and the plasma beam. Those are all uh, weapons that you uh, get as you progress throughout the game, um, and you change them by going into the beams part of, your, uh, of, of the menu, and you can't do it on the fly. Those are all those, are all those uh, beams. We have two more that we may wish to consider for this ranking. One, the grapple beam. Now, this is the one that I left off the list because to me, it feels more like a secondary accessory, like a missile or super missile or power bomb. And partly it's because you select it that way um, and also because it's not like an offensive weapon. But I'm willing to hear the argument otherwise. Well, so yeah, that, that's a fair point that like, um, if we're defining beams by ones, you have to go into the menu to like equip instead of like a secondary weapon. Um, like the other things, I under I can understand why that is the distinction we're making. But I would argue that the grapple beam should be counted as a beam, and not just because it's called a it has the word beam um, in it. Although that I mean, doesn't that's, hurt. <laughs> that that's hard to argue against. <laughs> if you just said it's a beam, it's called a grapple beam. I I would have no. I would have to stop arguing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so maybe I should stop right there. But I'm going to keep going because I'm also going to Thank say you. that it does in fact have offensive capabilities um there's you know the boss battle where you can use the like you get picked up you can use the grapple beam to like shoot the electrical pods that are around and that allows mm -hmm. you to like electrocute the boss like fairly easily um you can use it to like stun stuff and i think it has some properties against uh metroid maybe when they're frozen although i guess anything does maybe at that point 
Um, yeah. But I mean, so we, we, I, yeah. I guess basically, I, I think we should count it as a beam. I, Okay, we'll we'll count it as a beam. Um, then the the next uh, debatable one is the hyper beam. Now this is the beam that you get at the very end of the game. It is called the hyper beam. Like you can go into the menu and see that it it has replaced all your other beams. But it is such a like story specific beat, and I don't know that I could describe its qualities as separate from say the plasma beam, other than it is just a more powerful version of that. Yeah, it has no, it definitely has like no utility out of just being like this cool reward that you get at the end of the game. Um, and that it's just like a fun thing to have for those last couple of minutes. Again, I would say we should like include it in the ranking, but okay. we, but we have to, but we would have to take into account, you know, like all of the things we just talked about when we're sure. Cause is it cool and is it colorful? Yes. Does it have mm-hmm. like a bunch of utility beyond that? No, not really. Right. Okay. All right. I think that is fair. All uh, seven beams are in play here. Um, so, uh, Mark, do you need a refresher on what these beams are slash what they do? Yeah, I think that would be helpful. Uh, not just for me, although maybe just for me, but our listeners as well. Okay. So the charge beam, uh, this is, allows you to charge up your regular, uh, your regular shots. Before this, uh, if you hold the button down, nothing happens. Um, but with the charge beam, you hold it up, you uh, let out a more powerful shot. Um, the ice beam, a classic in Metroid. Um, it allows you to freeze things when you shoot them enough times, uh, then allowing you to climb on top of them. Even if it's something that you've frozen in midair, it continues to float. Um, so it means you can access a lot more uh, places. The spacer beam, which has a sort of uh, vertical spread. So when you shoot it, instead of being like one thing, it is three things. Uh, So it's basically good for uh, hitting high and low at the same time. Uh, Next is the wave beam, which uh, also hits both high and low, but in sort of like uh, a parabolic pattern. Um, It also has the characteristic of um, going through uh, like walls so like if if there's something that's on the other side of like a door or something you can shoot it using the wave beam um and then finally the plasma beam which is sort of just a more powerful version of your existing beam it cannot be used in conjunction with the spacer um so like usually by the time you get the plasma beam uh spacer has turned off and you haven't really noticed because with the plasma beam combined with the wave beam it still like has cuts a pretty big swath uh, so are there any of these that you feel strongly about right out of the gate? <sighs> I mean, no, not really. I, I, I don't I don't really know. I, I guess the, the one thing that I think um, the, the shape of this list is that it should all probably lead up to the ice beam um, because the ice beam is such a like foundational part of Metroid. Yeah, I think you're right. I mean, is there a way to defeat Metroids? without the ice beam like you have to oh i don't think so don't you yeah yeah so like you have to freeze them yeah yeah, so i i agree with you i think this is maybe an easy number one that we can just say the ice beam um you know and it has like you were saying it has the utility for exploration and it's just kind of cool yeah and like it's it's one of those things that's just like it's built into the like what uh, Metroids are. Metroids are, you know, they're vulnerable to cold. You know? So I have, uh, I have to admit, I have alter- ulterior motives for putting the grapple mm. beam in here, and that's because I want to trash it. Like, I want to denigrate oh, it. I want to denigrate no! its existence. Because I hated using the grapple beam in the game um, for whatever right. reason. And this is, I'm sure, personal failings. I had such difficulty figure like controlling the grapple beam so anytime that there were um uh areas that like required me to use the grapple beam before you get the space jump i dreaded it like i like really there were times where i got like frustrated and i was like i okay i'm just not progressing any further because i am so sick of trying to control samus on this grapple beam and i know it's a lot like mostly my problem but it really colored my uh enjoyment of super metroid well but i i i think it may have been especially a mark problem but i don't think it is uniquely a mark problem i think that the physics of the grapple beam 
um, well, it wants you to, it like tries to project the idea that it is working on like a real physical momentum that you've got this like 360 degree range of motion around a grapple point. But like the Super Nintendo can't really do that in a realistic way. So like it's faking it in some capacity and that faking it will lead you to launch yourself off in a direction you do not mean to. <laughs> So, I, I mean, I, I will agree. Obviously, I was uh, an advocate for not even having it on the list. Um, but Mark has a vendetta, so it's going on, and it's going to be number seven. Uh, uh, what do you think is the... Yeah. <laughs> go, no, no, go, go ahead. ahead. Go ahead. Um, so, I, I will say, while the spacer beam is uh, useful early in the game, um, I do not understand its name. Uh, and I think... <laughs> <laughs> like it's a spacer what does that mean i don't it it is non evocative of something cool yeah like when you were describing the wave beam and you were talking about how it's like parabolic it's like yes that is cool like that is something i can wrap my head around a spacer i don't i don't know how i would describe that to people poorly <laughs> okay so i think tentatively we're putting spacer at at number 6 um the and the then one i think well, the one yeah, thing I ahead. will say in Spazer's defense, and why I think potentially charged. Did you beam... just stop yourself from saying Spazer's favor? <laughs> <laughs> and why I would possibly put Charge Beam at number six is because the Charge Beam is too vanilla. The Charge Beam is just like, oh, cool, I'm charging my beam. It's almost the opposite problem of Spazer, where it's like, yeah, I get it, Charge Beam. You charge the beam. Yeah, it's uh, the the and I I I, w I think I would put space or charge beam just above spacer, but I think it's possible they are tied for fifth place. It, if if we want to do that, um, because the the charge beam is uh, one of the abilities where when I start Super Metroid, I'm like, oh, that's right, I can't even charge yet. Right. Um, it's one of those things where I'm like, I should be I should be able to do this. Mega Man figured it out by Mega Man three but still he figured it out um and then you don't even like think twice like yeah you should be able to charge up your shots yeah i, I love this they should a hundred percent tie for fifth place i love it the ultimate uh, indignity <laughs> <laughs> um and then I, I think probably after that i want to do the hyper beam because while it is cool um it is uh it's a novelty it is uh, a fireworks display and nothing else. Yeah, it deserves to be a shade above the charge beam, but I agree it goes no further. Okay, so that is the, the hyper beam coming in at number four, which means the only undecided spots we have left are three and two, and the beams that we have left are the plasma beam and the wave beam. So I will advocate for wave beam being number two, because the plasma beam, while like fine again is not like i suppose it has uh like more utility than some of the other ones but it's not very exciting um i uh i just really i really like the wave beam there's something about like the um uh, when it shoots out it just is visually appealing yeah well and so that that is another one that is uh a carryover from the original Metroid. In fact, the wave beam and the ice beam are like the only two beam upgrades you get in the uh, original Metroid. And I think that's, you know, with it's with good reason that they come back in this one and every subsequent uh, Metroid, like they're just so uh, foundational to the way these games are played where like you're going to need a beam that gets into um, other areas and you're going to need a beam that uh, freezes stuff. Um, like it's just that that is Metroid. Um, so I will back that play to put the wave beam at at number two and the plasma beam then just sort of settles in at number three, um, right there, right next to the hyper beam, basically. Um, so uh, Mark, y y can you see the list? I can. Do you want me to read it down? Uh, yeah, read it down. Okay. So number and coming in at number seven, grapple beam. Um, yeah, exactly. E dirt grapple beam. Uh, tied for number five is the charge beam and the spacer beam. 
Uh, man, the thing I love about these rankings is I can really work myself up emotionally about hating <laughs> these like things that otherwise I would not think about at all. Uh, number four is the hyper beam. Number three is the plasma beam. Number two is the wave beam. And number one with the bullet is the ice beam. Uh, that's a great list. Mark, uh, let's move on to, <clears throat> to the Shy Guy variants from uh, Super Mario World 2, Yoshi's Island. Okay, this is the fattest list that we have, right? This, this is a long one. I think I underestimated how many different variations of Shy Guy there are. Yeah, when we talked about Yoshi's Island, you know, one of the things I liked most about the game was how, how, what a celebration of Shy Guy it is. Yes. Um, but now I think we need to kind of go through and, uh, first of all, uh, discuss the different kinds of Shy Guy and then also determine if all of these different Shy Guys actually count as different Shy Guys mm -hmm. uh, or even if they are all Shy Guys. Um, it's a confusing list. Uh, so maybe let's just go back and forth. Um, I'll, I'll start. The first is just regular old shy guy, vanilla shy guy. Nothing wrong with that, you know. Um, it's a good guy. Yeah. Uh, next we have the shy guy on stilts, which you've got to respect a shy guy with hustle. Mm -hmm. They're they're up high <laughs> on them stilts. Uh, next. We've got the fat shy guy, who I think is going to be an early contender for number one. Um, <laughs> He's like too tall. He's lumpy. When you uh, make an egg with him, the egg itself is enormous. <laughs> yeah, Fat Shot Guy is early front runner for Cutie of the Bunch. Um, mm -hmm. Pedal Guy is up next. Uh, it's a shy guy whose head is it, like just has flowers growing out of it. Yeah, and sometimes it hides by like just ducking down real low and like becoming one with the landscape. Mm -hmm. um, Possibly another contender for number one, I think. Um, next is Spear Guy. Um, so this is the shy guy that like uh, is like has war paint on and is like carrying a little spear and marches around. Uh, next up is uh, Stretch, which I didn't even remember this one. I had to look it up. It's a like a shy guy that is looks like it's been like um, uh, compressed in like a press. Uh, so it's like mm -hmm. thinner and skinny but it's like distorted and tall in a way that like they literally took the sprite and just like uh dragged in the two sides did you ever read charlie and the chocolate factory yeah um so at, at the end of the book like all of the you know all it's uh, the kids all suffer the same fates that they do in the movie but at the end of the book like charlie sees all the kids having just been um, you know, fixed through Wonka's means. Um, and Mike TV, who has shrunken down, um, gets uh, stretched out in the taffy puller uh, to be like restored to his normal size. And this is what I imagine he looked like. He looked <laughs> like stretch. Um, and then next up is the Sniffit. Um, so I do we think the Sniffit is a shy guy? I think so, because I think it's pretty clearly like a shy guy who's wearing a mask. Like a different mask, you mean? They all wear masks. <laughs> right, yeah, 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 yes. Yeah, it's like how, like, in, uh, you know, Star Wars, the Stormtroopers, there's, like, different levels mm. of Stormtroopers. Sure. Um, and I th uh, I think that Sniffits are maybe, like, the elite guard of um, Shy sure, Guys. The Praetorian guard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, all right, so that the the sniffit, uh, their their mask has like a little bit more of a um, tube shape to the mouth, and they spit um, like little bullets at you. So up next is the whirly fly guy, shy guy. <laughs> whirly no, fly guy. Is oh, correct. it is fly guy. That's right. Okay. Yeah. Um, be I thought I was just writing like a really cool TLC song, but um, yeah, the whirly fly guy. So they are like. They're shy guys, I guess, clearly, but they have, like, a propeller, and so they can fly around. Also, in the game, they're, like, flashing um, different colors a bunch. Yeah, um, I, I really like the posture of the whirly fly guy. It looks like it is being dragged by the propeller. <laughs> like, it yeah. doesn't have a lot of agency here. Yeah, like, you know, in... Um, 
uh, community theater productions of like Peter Pan or something, or when you're doing really <laughs> elementary like wire work, um, and so yeah. somebody's like being picked up from the uh, from like their lower back, so they're always like yes. out a little bit. Um, that is 100 percent what the whirly fly guy looks like. That being said, do you like? I know that we counted the um, sniffer as a different type. But this is just a shy guy with a like hooked into some sort of apparatus. Yeah, but the uh, f- um, the spear guy is just a shy guy with a spear. Well, he's you know he's wearing makeup. Okay, well then, what about the uh, shy guy on stilts? Is <laughs> just literally a shy guy on stilts. <laughs> no, you're right. You're right. We have to keep him. This is all. This is very valid. This is very valid. Uh, okay, and then there's woozy guy who is the kind of shy guy who looks just like the rest of them, except it doesn't like walk towards you. It like kind of jumps and flips. Um, And this is really where the game is using that FX2 chip to just like rotate this sprite around. Um, Nothing really special about him, but he does jump and flip. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Sure. I guess we keep him at this point. I think we have to. (laughs) I mean, we could probably think of some arbitrary reason to kick him out. But not <laughs> worth it. Uh, the mace guy. Um, it's a shy guy with a mace. It's a little too big for him. He's. Uh, it's. It's heavy. So this is one that I marked as optional because Yoshi can eat the mace and then it just becomes a regular shy guy. So this is one that is even demonstrated in gameplay to just be a regular old shy guy who happens to have a mace. But you can also knock the uh, shy guys on stilts off of their stilts. And you can, I'm pretty sure you can, like, uh, knock the spear off of the, like... Uh, the, the spear guys? The spear guys. All right, Mace Guy stays. <laughs> um, and then the, the final uh, candidate here, which, again, I have marked as optional, is the Train Bandit. Now, these are drawings of Shy Guys that chase you when you are the train and you do the little, like, transformation... Um, to like move up the walls in those like chalk drawings. Um, so Mark, are these shy guys? I don't think so. I think they're like representations of shy guys. So do you remember how we had to um, uh, like not include Mecha Koopas in our ranking of Koopas because they were like, uh, you know, they're not like real Koopas. They are right. um, like replicas or toy versions of them. I think the same thing is true of the train bandits here. Sure. So it, this is a little bit uh, like, this is not a pipe. This is not a shy guy. <laughs> like it's the same. It's a drawing of a shy guy at, at best. Yeah, exactly. Um, all right. So <laughs> I'm glad we finally eliminated one. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right. Um, so are, do you have a, uh, how many do we have total here? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten total that we have to rank. Um, do you have any early contenders for like bottom of the barrel? Like yeah. what, what don't you like on this list? Um, so I, I don't have a lot of vitriol for any of these. Uh, I, I'm, I just like shy guys. So seeing variants yeah. is fun, but the woozy guy and the mace guy, um, I are both towards the bottom of the list for me. Um, I will also put the stretch towards the bottom of the list. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't like, I, I can understand the, um, specific and unique charms to just about all the rest of them, but like a shy guy that's a little bit taller, uh, doesn't ring super interesting to me. Well, I think the the problem with stretch is that you, you know, just like Laurel and Hardy, you need a fat shy guy by his side. Like you need the contrast because on his own, mm, sure. he's just not that interesting, but as a duo, they'd be hilarious. Unfortunately. Uh, and, yeah. Stretch is not a part of the duo. No. Uh, and I mean, like Casper, the friendly ghost did it. And then also had a stinky in there. <laughs> and there's no stinky shy guy. <laughs> that character's name is just stretch. Isn't it? <laughs> Uh, so uh, yeah, I, I, yes, I, I agree out of like the ones we have, I, um, think that stretch is in the bottom three for sure. Okay. Um, well, so then let's, let's hammer down the, uh, or sh- should we just throw them in, in the bottom three or should we tier this one? I guess. I think we might have to, I think it'll be easier for us if we do it that way. Okay. 
Um, so then, uh, what are you thinking for what, what are like the, the A tier, like the, the, the highest quality shy guys? So I think straight up shy guy is probably in the high tier. Um, Mm -hmm. I think fat shy guy, and then I would put pedal guy in there. And those are probably the top for me. Yeah, I would I would also say that the uh spear guy is a high like middle of the pack for me. Like um I may fight for him to be number 4, but I don't think I could make an argument that he is better than either vanilla shy guy, um fat shy guy or pedal guy. And I do okay, yeah, I okay. So let's say that's our top because um because I do think that like sniff it I like a lot, but is he like going to be top tier probably not. So we shouldn't muddy that discussion too early. Yeah, I I agree with that one hundred percent. Um. So all right, shy guy, shy guy on stilts. Uh, I don't know why I said that. Uh, forgive me. Um. So now, uh, w- the the middle of the pack here is the spear guy, sniff it, whirly fly guy, and shy guy on stilts. Um, which I think is probably right. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I would say Shy Guy on Stilts is probably lower of the middle for me, um, for the same reason that like Mace Guy isn't that high. Uh, it's fun to run into one and be like, because it happens early in the game and you're like, oh, it's like a new type of Shy Guy, but it's just a Shy Guy on Stilts. Yeah. And all you got to do is get on top of them and you're fine. Yeah. Uh, okay. okay. All right. All right. All right. Um, so let's, uh, j- just to recap the sort of, uh, a tier, the top tier of these, uh, is going to be not in this order, but shy guy, fat, shy guy, and pedal guy. The middle of the road are the spear guy, sniff it, whirly shy, or sorry, whirly fly guy <laughs> and the shy guy on stilts. And then the bottom of the barrel is going to be a uh, stretch woozy guy and mace guy. Again, not necessarily in those orders. Um, Although I would like to say that I think I put Mace Guy at the very bottom. Yeah, I me too. Um, okay. I, I actually think the bottom tier is probably in the order that I would put it in. So like Mace Guy, last place, uh, Woozy Guy next, and then um, Stretch at like the best of the worst. Um, tell me what you have against Woozy Guy. Uh, I think the only thing I don't like about it in comparison to Stretch is like, yeah, Stretch is like a easy variation but at least it's a like variation on design which i value more than like oh it flips around yeah uh, i i i i will agree with that that is a good assessment let's address the middle of the pack now which again is spear guy sniff it whirly fly guy and shy guy on stilts so you said you've got some affinity for the sniff it yeah, I I uh like the kind of like weirdness of the mask and just like the weirdness of the conceit where it's like okay, a shy guy is wearing a mask and now can shoot like it's almost like a plague mask almost. It's just really weird. Um I kind of like how strange it is. Mhm. Uh I I will agree that it is very very weird and is a thing that as a kid I'm not sure I understood because th- these things are in um, Super Mario Brothers 2, Super Mario USA um, on, on the uh, NES. And I remember really, really liking them. Like they were one of the character designs in that game that I like really latched onto. That and the the ninjas, the little star guys. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I don't know why, but I just loved them. Uh, you know, the shy guys themselves, I could have, like, I could take or leave at that point. Like, the little bird things, like, you know, whatever. Uh, those two were, like, my enemies. Um, I loved them. Um, but now, uh, I just think the spear guy is so much funnier. Like, the the existence of, like, the spear guy with, like, war paint implies like a culture or something around these shy guys <laughs> that, like, nothing else really seems to. Yeah, I mean, it really does, in a way, like, open up the world of Shy Guys, where you're like, yeah, all over the Mushroom Kingdom, there are Shy Guy, and they all have different cultures, and they all have, you know, like, 
um, different potentially Rituals. religions and like yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, and you know it's that that that's one of the things I loved about Yoshi's Island is that it is a celebration of shy guys of all type. So <laughs> so yeah, I I think it. Um, uh, I I totally agree with you. I like having it at the top of that middle tier there. In fact, maybe I like it more than just like a traditional shy guy. Oh, interesting. Well, so we have the shy guy right now in the A tier. Do we need to demote him to the uh to the the lower tier? I'm open to it. I don't know if we need to. Um I I like oh, cuz I mean, I think the shy guy just straight up shy guy is probably at the bottom of the A tier for me. So like he's flirting with that B tier anyway. So like to make that switch isn't crazy to me. Um Mark, I think that's exactly what we need to do. I think we need to move the shy guy to uh to the middle tier and then maybe promote uh the spear guy to the A tier. I think so. I, I feel good about that. So then I guess okay. the question is like, okay, so for me I'm leaning towards fat shy guy as being the top. Um well ho- hold on. I, I I don't think we're necessarily done with the middle tier yet unless oh, you okay, like where okay. they are. Okay. Um so currently the middle tier uh, looks like we ha- we would have and this is all subject to change uh the shy- vanilla shy guy at number 4, number 5 the sniffit, number 6 the worldly fly guy and number 7 the shy guy on stilts. Do you like that? Yeah, I think I think so. Okay. Um I will now entertain conversation <laughs> about the top 3. <laughs> okay. So for me, I'm uh leaning towards fat shy guy as number 1 and um I'm not entirely sure what to do about Pedal Guy versus Spear Guy. Uh, both were very surprising to me. Like when I saw it, like it was like a d- kind of like delightful moment. Um, mm-hmm. Pedal Guy, I think, was more surprising for whatever reason. I I- am imagining Pedal Guy as being like a, a free love 1960s San Francisco like hippie shy oh, guy. Totally. Yeah. He's a pacifist. Like you, he's an enemy only in that you run into him and get hurt, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so there's something that's very like appealing to me about that. Mm-hmm. Um, I also think the design is really funny. Just like having a shy guy with like flowers <laughs> uh, growing out of its head is just like because there's something like like uh, wrong about shy guys. Right, just like their design, mm-hmm. you're like inherently um feels a little malicious, a little evil, um at least yeah. a little like mischievous in the way that like Jawas do. Yeah, where where you're never actually seeing the creature, and you're like, why won't you let me see that creature? <laughs> it always needs to wear a mask. It always needs to be wearing this like robe, and like the sleeves cover the hands. Like you cannot see what the shy guy looks like. Um and for it to have because you're right it's not even like it has a flower or like a crown of flowers it has like a bouquet of flowers growing out of it the top of its head it is a bizarre creature yeah i mean like to take like the jawa from star wars metaphor like a little or comparison a little further it's like jawas you know they come in different sizes like there's some tall ones there's some shorter ones but we have yet to see a pacifist jawa who's just you know trying to live its life be one with the earth and if you did that would be hilarious and i'm hoping mandalorian season two shows us something like that come on mandalorian you already showed us that jawas are apparently all over the galaxy (laughs) and not just on tatooine (laughs) um okay so i think uh i think we both really like the pedal guy uh and maybe want to have him at number two yeah i i feel good about that Okay, so uh, I believe that means we have a complete ranking. Um, so from uh, number ten on up. Um, wait, wait, wait. In sorry. Before, t- before we get here, do you yeah. do you? After we've talked about this, I really sold myself on the pedal guy. So I'm wondering if like does fat shy guy have more going for him than just being like really cute, like a toddler? Uh, <laughs> so it 
not only is it uh, cute like a toddler, but it changes the physiology of the character in that it suddenly has a body that is separate from its head. <laughs> like one of the things that the, the shy, again, we can't see the creature, but we can guess by looking at it and looking at its clothes that its head and its body are one piece. It like may not even have a head as we think of it. And so the mask is disguising the fact that it has no like traditional head. However, the fat shy guy has a body. It has <laughs> a, a separate legs and separate arms and a separate head on top of that big fat body. So like it is possible that it is not even technically a shy guy, but just like a another creature that put on shy guy robes and is like, yeah, I don't know. I don't tell you I'm a fat shy guy. I think it's so funny and so weird. And the fact that it has the like sort of unique gameplay thing of turning into giant eggs, which are then thrown differently and have different effects when it is thrown. I think that makes the fat shy guy a more like novel encounter in the game. Okay. Yeah. I like that. I like that. Um, okay. So uh, just to recap, from number 10 is the mace guy. Number nine is woozy guy. Number eight is stretch. Number seven is shy guy on stilts. Number six is whirly fly guy. Number five is sniff it. Number four is just regular old shy guy. Number three is spear guy. Number two is pedal guy. And number one, the best shy guy is the fat shy guy. Mark, we are now moving on to our fourth and final list. Star Fox, the members of Star Fox. Mark, why don't you just run down the, the members of Star Fox for us? All right. we Mercifully, there is just the classic four in the SNES game. We're talking about Fox McCloud, uh, Falco Lombardi, Slippy Toad, and Peppy Hair. Um, great characters. I, I love uh, Mark pulled graphics for these that are sitting in our show note doc, and I love the way they look as puppets. It's so perfect. I love them. Yeah, it's the little like um puppets that they used in the box art and like all that kind of stuff. Uh, they don't look like their modern day sprites like Falco and stuff like that. Do not, but there is something very endearing. Uh, very like Thunderbirds, which is perfect for this yeah, sort totally. of uh, franchise. Very fantastic, Mister Fox as well. Oh, totally. Yeah. Um, so it, it, do you have like an early contender for, uh, bottom are, are there any of these characters that you do not like now? So here's like, I think Slippy is annoying, um, or mm-hmm. can be annoying, especially in like the more modern incarnations where you hear Slippy talk a lot, but I think like Slippy being annoying at least evokes more emotion in me than, um, peppy hair, which is, mm-hmm. is like milk toast to the point that I would put Peppy Hair at the bottom. Um, I'm going to agree with that. Uh, and I think part of it is also I'm just reacting to what I know the public perception of Slippy to be. Like, I think he gets a bad rap for, A, having an annoying voice. Um, and I guess that's that's probably it, right? <laughs> is, is that people don't like the voice of the character. Um, but, like... I don't know, he, in, like you say, in being annoying, in being, uh, having a little bit more like of a childlike quality to him, I do feel bad when I shoot him. And he's like, <laughs> hey, Fox, where, watch where you're shooting. I'm like, oh, no. Whereas, like, I hit Peppy, and I'm like, old man, get out of my way. <laughs> right? You're just like, what, you know, like, uh, whatever. Um, I mean, genuinely, I think it's telling that, you know, like, Falco, of course, has been in Smash Brothers, like, yeah. People love Falco. Falco's really cool. Um, yeah, like Peppy, I just don't really know. I guess he's curmudgeonly. Like I, yeah. I mean, the the thing that's hard about Peppy is that I think he's supposed to because he flew with um, James McLeod, Fox Fox's right. father, um, and so like I think he's supposed to be that like link to Fox's past and like a little bit of a um like a guide or like a mentor figure to him but like that's not really the dynamic that plays out when fox is still like the leader of star fox right um so i I feel like they don't do a super effective job of characterizing peppy as what they're trying to you know what i mean like he never really comes across as the obi-wan kenobi yeah and um yeah and like peppy 
look, pe- hating on Peppy is a little bit like hating on somebody's grandfather. Um, but you know, some people's grandfathers. I mean, let's do it. <laughs> yeah, like some people's grandfathers are like racist, or mm-hmm. you know, they like chew with their mouth open and they're not apologetic about it, and you just don't want to be around that. Right, and they picked up some terrible habits uh, and views when they fought in Korea, and they're just going to bring that back forever. And you're like, Grandpa, we're not fighting in that war anymore. And he's like, well, I don't. this is how I grew up. Yeah, Pepe, like Slippy at least has hope for the future, right? Like, yes. at some point, Slippy will go through puberty, and <laughs> like the voice will change. Or if it doesn't, it'll become its selling point, and... Uh, Slippy will become like of doing like voice actors for children's cartoons, and Slippy will find a purpose. Peppy, as terrible as this is to say, has outlived his purpose. Mm, yes, sure. Peppy should allow himself to get sick and die to reopen the economy. <laughs> there, I said it. <laughs> no, uh, S- Slippy also like has a built-in purpose. He's the mechanic, right? So like he has he can. F- like be sort of an annoying or like uh, less competent pilot than the rest of them, but it's because he knows how these things work. He can repair the ships. No one else can. And he's look, the mechanic. I don't want to be too harsh on Peppy because someday we're going to be in his comfort shoes and we're not going to want to be sent out on the ice flow, you know? Right, 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 right. But I think n- four out of four, I think is <laughs> he's got, he's got to be bottom of the list for us. Yes. Yeah. Um, okay, so uh, Peppy, we're going to lock in at, at at number four, but I feel like everything else is still sort of up in the air. I don't think uh, Slippy is an automatic third place here. Yeah, I, um, agree. I agree. I mean, the more we're talking about Slippy, it's like, what does Falco have going, going for him exactly? Yeah, and in what ways is Falco not redundant to Fox? Because, you know, like in, in talking the... Uh, we keep going back to um, sort of Star Wars analogies here, but is it possible that's so that weird for Fox... us to do that? <laughs> is it possible that both Fox and Falco are Han Solo? <laughs> yeah, there is a little bit of that where you're like, well, there only really needs to be one of you, and maybe it's like a Top Gun type thing where you know mm. that's kind of supposed to be the point that they are both like ace pilots jockeying for that position, but Fox. Um, you know, kind of like inherited it. Um, so interesting, yeah. Uh, they're both cool. We will give them that, right? Like, as far as like yeah. coolness factor goes, like, um, they both outrank us. Like, I would be friends with Slippy for sure, right? Easy get. Yeah, yeah, t- totally. <laughs> yeah, Sl- Slippy, Slippy's calling us. So, like, <laughs> that that's great. Uh. F- uh, Fox and Falco, like maybe we follow them on Insta, and like that's it, <laughs> right? And um, we like run into them occasionally, and like yeah, they follow us back on Instagram, but they never like our photos, right? And then when we do run into them uh, places, we always uh, say our name just so they don't <laughs> we don't have that awkward moment <laughs> where they reveal that they can't quite place us. <laughs> Which one um, do you think is more attainable? Do you think Fox or Falco? Like, you could get into their inner circle easier. Uh, you as in me or you as in, like, one? Because I, I feel like I might be able to, uh, like, penetrate uh, Falco because I'm good with prickly people, right? Like, that I can make friends with people. Like, I am willing to talk shit. <laughs> if that'll like get me in with someone who's like a little bit rude or like a little bit mean. <laughs> and I don't think that would help me with Fox. I don't think Fox talks shit. Yeah, I think so I, I don't think he does either. I do think that like Falco, because he's a little more prickly, like it would be hard harder for me to approach him. Um mm-hmm. like Fox, I don't know, it'd be hard. Like is Fox one of those things where you're like, I think we'd be friends, but in real life we don't have anything in common. Um, he just yeah, seems sure. like a like a nicer, like more outgoing guy, um, or Fox. So I guess I don't really. I don't know. I I am look. If this is a friendship list, Slippy's going right to the top, right? 
I mean, I I almost feel like Slippy might go right to the top anyway. He feels like the most grounded of these characters that has like a, a set of goals and beliefs that I can most clearly identify and like align myself with. Yeah, I I feel like that's true, and I uh I also feel like you know as as fun as it is to like dunk on Slippy. Like, I think some of that is because I'm like, oh, boy, I'm glad people are dunking on Slippy and not dunking on me. Totally. <laughs> All right. So this is good. This is good. We're making progress, and it's interesting progress. <laughs> um, I, here, here's what I'm going to propose, is that uh, Falco should be number three, Fox should be number two, and Slippy Toad should be number one. I think think you're right because i think because all of that makes sense and i i think it's like um controversial potentially to not have fox at number one but i think fox uh suffers from just not being that well defined because he Mm -hmm. is that like main character and you're like okay we get it you have like dad issues like all that kind of stuff where it just feels a little like uh basic yeah uh, uh agree a- and again a little bit of a redundancy with falco who's going into the like the han solo ism of it like uh so hard and heavy that like i'm not sure that we need to have that same sort of like devil may care poe dameron attitude when like we already got it in in uh falco Okay, so the list is uh, number four, uh, Peppy Hair, number three, Falco Lombardi, number two, Fox McCloud, and at number one, the best member of uh, Star Fox is Slippy Toad. Mark, let's close out that list. But we're not done. Now we have these four rankings. We are going to zipper them all together into one mega list. One mega all- retro month mm-hmm. ranking. So it's going to be one list that's going to have uh, Shy Guy variants and Star Fox characters and Zelda bosses and Metroid beams on them all compared and ranked for your pleasure. Mark, what do you think is the worst thing on this list? Yes, man, that is tough. Uh, okay, I am eager to say that it is either the Armos Knights or the Mace Guy that I find the most offensive. Um, so I would also add the Grapple Beam to that list. I think the Grapple Beam is the worst thing on here. Uh, then maybe the Armos Knights and then the Mace Guy. I mean, you know how much I hate the Grapple Beam, so I won't uh, argue that point. Uh, All right, so Grapple Beam is going to be... Oh, shoot. (laughs) This is harder to do than I thought it was going to be. Okay. Grapple Beam, we are moving that to uh, 25th. Uh, And then the Armos Knights are 24th. And the Mace Guy is 23rd. Uh, So what, what what do you like next? Or what do you dislike next? Because <laughs> I, think, I think we agree that those, those are like the absolute bottom of the barrel. But then we start to, um, like, I, I think maybe we want to go like woozy guy next. As, yeah. as we build the list back up. Yeah. I th- so woozy guy, I think, is a good one in this place. Um, definitely. Because I, I feel like like Lanmola... And both the charge beam. I mean, just looking at like the bottom of everybody's list. And as much as yeah. you know, we really ragged on Peppy here. I don't think he's uh no, this we're not low there yet. Quite yet. We're not there yet. Um. Yeah. So yeah, comparing like Woozy Guy to Lanmola or the charge beam, I definitely think Woozy Guy is uh like at the bottom of those. Uh. Okay. So then, uh, c- sort of continuing by just like taking from the bottom of each of these lists, which I think is absolutely the perfect thing that we've stumbled into, <laughs> which is how we have to go. Uh, uh, stretch Lanmola or the Charge Beam, which is the next best uh, or next so, worst, I guess. Yeah. So okay, I I again am going to say that the Charge Beam should go lower here than Stretch because at least Stretch is something different. It's you know, like thin gruel, but it is at least something. Whereas charge beam feels like it should just be table stakes. 
uh, yeah, I, I agree with that. And then I, th- I think that the, uh, I think Stretch is probably next uh, there. Uh, and then probably Len Mola. Yeah, I think so too. Like these like dirt worm things can only get you so far. Yeah, and I really, I as far as like boss encounters go, like I just don't care about it. Um, uh, okay, so we we've knocked off a lot of these Zelda bosses already. <laughs> <laughs> well, there were only there were only four to begin with. Um, I know, but like the uh, okay, so we're we reached the spacer beam from Metroid uh, mm-hmm. around this point, and uh, I think I like it more than I like Shy Guy on stilts. And partly it is just the name because Spazer Beam doesn't mean anything, but could it also mean anything? Whereas Shy Guy on stilts, I know what I'm getting. It's a little too on the nose for you. <laughs> a little bit. Uh, all right. So uh, Shy Guy on stilts is, is next. Uh, I may argue that before we throw the Spazer Beam on there, that Peppy should be tied or right around the Shy Guy on stilts. Like they, mm-hmm. they, they occupy a similar space in my brain. Um, okay, well, I will also throw out Moldorm because I know we ranked it yeah. highly as far as like the Link to the Past Light World bosses, but in real life, I'm not, you know, like that thrilled with it when we're going up against some of these Shy Guy variants or even, you know, like the Spazer Beam. Yeah, I mean, honestly, now that I'm looking at it, maybe I really want the Whirly Fly guy to be next because <laughs> I don't totally love. I think it's funny that it's being like pulled up by uh by a propeller, but like, I don't know. The problem here is we've now put forth all four of the uh the next possible items. They all make sense. Yeah, yeah. I, okay, so like I I um I don't want to put Peppy hair quite okay. yet. Um, I yeah. don't want to, because we respect our elders on this show. I don't want to put the spacer beam quite yet. Um, okay. because I think the possibilities of the spacer beam are more interesting than the spacer beam itself, but I like this like black hole aspect of it. Um, whirly guy and whirly fly guy and Moldorm I'm debating between, mm-hmm. um, I think the Whirly Fly Guy is more delightful than Moldorm, but if we're going to like the idea of staying power, I think Moldorm beats out Whirly Fly Guy. Okay, I think I think I that that that's that's how I land uh is that the uh Whirly Fly Guy comes next and then Moldorm just uh kind of squeaking in above that. Uh which then maybe brings us to the Spacer Beam, right? Yeah, the spacer beam or peppy hair. Uh, I do think it's the I, spacer beam. I think it's spacer as well. Uh, so the the spacer beam comes next, uh, then probably peppy. So peppy's competition here is the sniff it, the hyper beam, and aganim. I, I think um, it's I interesting. Think it's de- I think it's interesting that aganim is like the last remaining Zelda boss, and I don't know how much higher it's going to go compared to some of this other stuff. I mean, I think, I think it's gonna go a little ways. I think it, it, it'll. I think Aganim will fall as soon as we start hitting like the real iconic stuff in any of these. Um, but I think it, it'll hang right until that moment. I think, yeah, you are for sure correct that like when we're comparing it to Hyper Beam or something. And I, I actually think it's probably time for the Metroid beams to go in general. Like, I think they're kind of middle mm. of the pack. Like, you can't compare. To me, I can't compare the hyper beam to Peppy Hair because it's like I don't may not love Peppy Hair, but it is a character, right? Versus right. just like one of a handful a of gun. beams that could be that could <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, okay, well then then I guess after Spazer Beam, uh I will say that we should go hyper beam plasma beam. Yeah. Um and then like I hit a little bit of a snag on wave because that's where it starts to become iconic Metroid stuff. Um but I think those two are next. Yeah, I, I, I think so too. Um, I'm a little disappointed in, like, I kind of think maybe the Sniffit should have been higher than the Shy Guy in our mm, original ranking of it. Now that I'm seeing this, like, I'm agitating a little bit. So I wonder if I could be wrong. We can... You- no, I think you might be right that the vanilla shy guy should be next. Yeah, that's in, where I'm leaning. In our compiled list uh that the order changes. 
I think, I mean, I think it's right. I think it's definitive to do it that way. Mm -hmm. I think you're right. Um, Okay, so the shy guy is next. Uh, Then maybe Peppy. Peppy is better than shy guy? Yes. I think it's more fully formed. I, I don't know that I could say that with much conviction. I don't know. I think maybe Shy Guy actually has to be uh, up one rank and we have to uh, slot Peppy in under him. Yeah. Okay. 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 All right. Uh, so uh, Peppy, the first Star Fox character, finally makes an appearance. Uh, then Shy Guy. Now do we go sniff it? <sighs> um, or does the wave beam make an appearance here? Yeah. I'm trying to think, like, which one do I... Like, what do I like more? Do Do I feel... Uh, like warm feelings when I hear the word wave beam or sniff it or Falco Lombardi. Um, okay, so I, I think there's oh, it's weird that like I'm I'm a little bit surprised that Star Fox characters are making it as high as they are, but I guess it makes sense because they really are like they're, they're stereotypes, characters. but they're at least like yeah. defined stereotypes. Um, so yeah, I, I I think the beams I still like at least wave beam has got to go in here before sniff it. Yeah, so I think that's where I go to that the wave beam is probably next. I love the wave beam, um, but it is just uh, it's just a gun. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but then probably the sniff it, who uh, let's face it, is also just a gun. <laughs> But it's a gun with feelings, presumably. To- to- <laughs> or at least with as much feelings as a shy guy has. <laughs> uh, so ne- next up is either going to be, is probably Spear Guy, if I'm being honest. Um, well, okay. I, I, I kind of feel like, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't have a lot of loyalty to the Ice Beam. Like, um, I, I would put Beam pretty low here. The reason that I would put Spear Guy above, like, Falco or probably even Aghanim is the fact that, like, when I saw the Spear Guy, I was delighted. And maybe it's sure. because, like, the newness factor, right? So maybe that's what did it for me. But I, I thought it was fun in a way that the other ones on this list, I didn't really feel that way about. So I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to bat for the Ice Beam a, a little bit to not put it right here. Um, just because it is uh, both weapon and traversal, it is such like a, a a cool part of how Samus navigates her environment and like interacts with it. Um, but so then I guess and like I, I can understand wanting to put the spear guy like a, a little bit further up the list, but I guess that means the next conversation we need to have is who's better, Falco or Aganim? Yeah, um, I feel like I could be friends with Aganim, right? Which I think in this case makes him lower. Makes him less good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, Aganim is next and then probably uh, Falco, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, all right. The Zelda bosses are now, uh, they've all been placed on, on, on the master list. Uh, then I think we probably have Spear Guy here. Yeah. I mean, I personally would vote for Ice Beam, but I understand that like, um, I understand where you're coming from, so I do think the right move is Spear Guy as a combination of like both of our lists. Yeah, uh, and then probably Ice Beam after after that. Yeah, uh, I think I- so. Ice Beam coming in at a respectable number five. Uh, that means that in the top four, we have to place Fox McCloud, Slippy Toad, Fat Shy Guy, and Petal Guy. I think Petal Guy is probably next on this list. No, for me, I like Petal oh, Guy more than I like tough. Fox McCloud. Okay, all right. I'm I'm fine with that. Let's put Fox next. Um, In fact, I think it might be like a, a Star Fox character, Shy Guy sandwich to the top, where like Fox McCloud, Petal Guy. Oh, well, maybe not. That's actually. not how a sandwich works. Uh, no, I mean, are you thinking? <laughs> hmm. No, I'm thinking. This is what I'm thinking: Fox McCloud, Petal Guy, Fat Shy Guy, Slippy Toad, number one. So Slippy Toad number one is bold. 
are, is that a statement that we as Nintendo Cartridge Society, this is we have to assemble, I, I'm not saying I disagree with you, but we need to assemble the editorial team here, <laughs> okay? And if this is a statement we're making, we all need to be behind it, and we need to make sure that we can defend it to our friends and loved ones when we are questioned about it later. I do think that that is vitally important. Uh, so let's put the pedal guy next and uh, discuss... Is Slippy Toad better than the Fat Shy Guy? Okay, so points in the Fat Shy Guy's favor. Mystery. We don't, we can't say for certain that it is a Shy Guy. Um, it. <laughs> He's fat and adorable. Yep. Um, uh, unique gameplay features. Turns into a giant egg. <laughs> That, yeah, pretty much. Ra- I mean, it's kind of like um, an extra delicious bit of cake because it's well documented that we love Shy Guys and we think they're great. And uh, to have like a fun new variant that is like even more cute is yeah. um, is a point highly in its favor. So sort of the opposite of that can sort of be said about Slippy. Generally speaking, and especially given your recent experience in Animal Crossing, we are not known to be friends of frogs in video games. Uh, Mark is having a hard time with his neighbor Huck in um, in Animal Crossing New Horizons, uh, and Slippy is generally considered to be like an annoying support character. However, he seems to be pretty well fleshed out as a character standing in stark contrast to the fat shy guy which is just an aesthetic choice at this point <laughs> um also look is there a little bit of like in defending slippy toad am i maybe trying to defend myself a little bit and you know like sure i'm not going to i'm not going to lie about that like is there a little bit of slippy in all of us do we wish to be star foxes but, you know, like, we're shooting for the Star Fox moon and we're landing among the Slippy Toad f- stars. <laughs> Maybe. Absolutely. Are we shooting for the Star Fox moon and landing among the Slippy Toad stars? Mark, I don't, we need to end the episode right now. That was so perfect. <laughs> the fat shy guy is coming in at number two and Slippy Toad is coming in at number one. I'm, I'm calling it right now. Although, as I'm trying to paste these things into the document, I am messing it up. (laughs) I think this is a very good retro month definitive ranking. Um, Mark, would you like to read us down from uh, 25 to number one? Yeah, so coming in at number 25 is the Grapple Beam. Um, Coming in at 24 is the Armos Knights from the Eastern Palace. Um, 23 is the Mace Guy. 22 is the Woozy Guy. Num- 21 is the Charge Beam. Number 20 is Stretch, the Shy Guy from Yoshi's Island. Um, number 19 is Lanmola, the boss from the Desert Palace. Number 18 is the Shy Guy on Stilts. Number 17 is the Whirly Shy Guy. Number 16 is Moldorm from the Tower of Hera. Number 15 Mm -hmm. is the Spazer Beam. Number 14 is the Hyper Beam. Number 13 is the Plasma Beam. Coming in at number 12 is Peppy Hair. And then rounding out the bottom 15 is the regular Vanilla Shy Guy. Now, Mm -hmm. Uh, that brings us into the top 10. Uh, uh, let's, Let's do it. So sneaking in at number 10 is the Wave Beam, followed by the Sniffit at number 9. Number 8 is, uh, uh, man, I'm blank. Uh, say, say I can name. One. Yeah, there we go. Um, uh-huh. From Hyrule Castle. Uh, number 7 is Falco Lombardi. Number 6, which whose name is just awesome and so... Um, uh, I love how like hyper localized it feels with the last name Lombardi which just makes me think of like football like American football like it just feels like so perfect (laughs) wait I mean it is weird to think that like this bird is Italian (laughs) uh number six 
is Spear Guy. Number five is the Ice Beam. Um, number four is Fox McCloud. Number three is Pedal Guy. Number two is the Fat Shy Guy. And coming in at number one is everybody's favorite character, Slippy Toad. <laughs> All right, Mark, let's close out this definitive list. Normally at this point in the show, this is where I would ask you to uh, email us with your thoughts on our definitive ranking, but I don't need them. I think I think we did a great job. If you would like to email us congratulating us on a good job and a good ranking, you can send us an email to Nintendo Cartridge Society at, at gmail.com. Gmail. Uh, and that's it. That's the show. Uh, thank you for listening. Please remember to rate, review, and subscribe on Apple Podcasts. If you like the episode, you can share it on Facebook or Twitter or wherever you share stuff. Um, on Twitter, you can follow us. I'm at Patrick underscore Ellers. Mark is at MKE Mitchell, and the show is at Nin Card Society. You can also check out the Facebook page, which is just Nintendo Cartridge Society. Olivia Duncan, Olivia Duncan made our logo. Our theme music is provided by Ape Betty. And again, you should go to apebetty.com to download his new single, which is a cover of uh, Prince is nothing compares to you and it's great so please go to apebetty.com and listen to his theme song right now for my co-host mark mitchell this is patrick eller saying slippy toad for life and thanks for listening My name is Will Himes, and I am a ghost writer, meaning I write other people's books for them. And I have a podcast called I Will Write Your Book, which are recordings of my meetings with my eccentric clients, such as a woman blocked after one sentence of a children's book about her dogs, a romance novelist who dislikes sex, and a man proud of having sampled everything in his local grocery store. This podcast has been described as fully improvised, played by some of the best comedians on the planet Earth. Hey, that's pretty good. That's I Will Write Your Book on Campfire Media. Campfire.